what's going on guys welcome back to the daily grind i'm your host jump change is live and recorded welcome welcome mr max voltage what's going on Ma automatic beats we have zij miner rc what's up man steven cicero chris hanley alexander what's up buddy good to see you game with smoky dan who else is here let's see is the pirate dumpster fire you guys are awesome appreciate you all as soon as i got out of the shower this morning my kid threw up all over my bed <laughs> so that's why we are starting a half hour late because i had to tend to that before i could come down here uh all right dakar what's up buddy good to see you all right let's get into <laughs> today's stream so i saw Alcoin daily put a um video out with ben armstrong and i want to see what he has to say but i have a few other things i kind of want to go over briefly and this is gonna have to be a quick stream so i'm just gonna rifle through things and if you guys want to ask any questions feel free just put it in the chat all right let's see how's bitcoin doing 27,594. not too bad i mean still 2600 uh 27 600 basically right it was 28 yesterday but that came down i think it was 28 and a half right and it dropped like a grand during yesterday's stream ltc is at 90 look at that look at that nice that's cool and i like actually did you guys know that on coin 360 you could just hover your mouse over the certain coin you want and just zoom in and it'll zoom to that coin which is pretty cool i think that's pretty neat all right 1733 for eth 90 bucks for litecoins looking good i'm happy about that this crypto bubbles thing is actually awesome i love this uh site now that i know what it is if you guys haven't seen it before this is uh you can change it from day week month it tells you like what's most profitable and the top 100 200 300 you can change it to whatever you want so kind of neat you can make a watch list favorites blocks block list whatever to each his own but yeah i just have top 100 it looks like hex is up all over the uh what's it called sorry it's it's the highest here but ltc just kind of threw me for a loop 13.1 percent in the day damn that's crazy i wonder what's going on there anyways Fair and greed index 57 sorry guys i'm all off today we have uh the top 10 coins bitcoin ethereum tether bnb usd coin xrp still in sixth cardano dogecoins in eighth lido staked ether and polygon in 10th all right let's get over to first i want to do some coin desk stuff or just go over some coin desk stuff they had a couple articles or not articles but just some stuff we've already talked about but i want to uh i would like to see what they have to say about it so this is the biology whatever the heck his name is predicts bitcoin's price will hit a million dollars in like 90 days right so i want to hear what they have to say hopefully you guys are interested in this if uh if not you guys can skip forward a little bit but good morning rude puts and raven boy crypto good to see you guys sloth squash what's up buddy all right let's get into this see what they got to say here we're talking about Bitcoin. oh boy he's really loud sorry if that's too loud let's see we're talking about bitcoin and we're talking about maybe the bullish prospects for bitcoin perhaps none more bullish again i just want their take on this and i truly i truly believe that this is just fud so i mean just just a bunch of bs to try to pump the market it's exactly like uh john mcafee when he went out and said that he would bet bitcoin's gonna get to a million dollars or he'd eat his own you know what i mean so just <laughs> it's the same exact bs as that if you guys haven't heard that you can go look it up but Either way, let's watch this. Then this bet that was accepted over the weekend, <laughs> offered up by former Coinbase CEO, Balaji Srinivasan, big time thinker in crypto and beyond. And he's saying that Bitcoin price will hit $1 million in the next 90 days. That's something like June 17th by my count. And he took this bet with two folks. So he has $2 million on the line to see if Bitcoin can hit a $1 million in price in mere months all right a lot of people were talking about this over the weekend seemed a bit foolhardy seemed a bit strange even but balaji has been right before and he may be right again famously he kind of called covid he's not gonna be uh, right again. prior to it really hitting and shutting down the world so these are certainly these uh these big bets that balaji is known to attach his personal brand to and we're seeing a big bet with a big number attached to the bitcoin price let's get gigabrain on this one will <laughs> What do you make of this? What's the point of this? Throw is the this, Wendy. Throw is the this Wendy. silly? I'll, I'll take what is, it. What is I'll going on? It. Wendy, what's happening? First off, put some respect on John McAfee's name. All right, guys? Put some respect on his name <laughs> because he was one of the original people out there. First off, John McAfee, RIP, he walked that walk of living in a true decentralized economy. And if you guys don't know who he is, 
go research him. I'm not going to say what bet that he placed, but he placed a similar bet that Bitcoin was going to hit $1 million per Bitcoin. (laughs) It didn't end up coming to fruition. But, but, but. Oh, what um, what were the terms? Wait, wait. What were the terms of that bet? Wait, what? What would he do with that? This is a PG show. This is a family family show. So basically he said he was going to eat a lot of hot dogs if Bitcoin... it was just one. It was just one hot dog. Just saying. Didn't mm-hmm. hit one million dollars by I think it was twenty twenty. I don't remember. But anyways, I think that this is an outlandish prediction. I'm not seeing it happen. I'm not and one of the tweets that I made about this is we have the United States bank banking system collapsing. Most people have no idea the banking system is collapsing. I walked into a Chase Bank to open up another account. The teller asked her boss, Why are so many people taking cash out? The fact that we had some- That's actually pretty scary. If the teller has to ask the boss, why are so many people taking cash out? They don't know what's going on. Yeah, it's kind of concerning. We work at a bank that had no idea what was happening in the banking system tells you all you need to know. On top of it, most Americans don't know how to use Bitcoin. And then we have all of this predatory regulation attacking exchanges. That is the, you know, the initial on and off ramp for Bitcoin. So I'm just not seeing fundamentally how this could hit $1 million. But again, if it does, I will be very, very happy. A lot of my problems in life will disappear. Zach, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, it certainly cements. And yeah, I saw these, I saw these tweets out there like, oh, this just, this is a million dollars to cement Balaji as the main character over the next three months. And I think people will yeah, be watching pretty this pretty closely, right? On. It's a very uh, ballsy move to say the least. And with a hat tip, to Mr. McAfee. Uh, that one, I think, is, you know, it's really fascinating to see if this is going to come to pass, right? We've seen these bullish calls before. I think Kathy Wood has attached some really big numbers to what Bitcoin's price will be. This one, obviously, given the short duration, we're talking June here, is going to be really fascinating to see unfold. And I guess if it does indeed hit, hit a million dollars per coin, there are likely to be significant other problems in the financial system and beyond if ultimately this is sort of a flight to safety type type bet. So anyway, I don't know. Seems silly. Seems like it might not hit. It could. It could be a chance. Could happen. I don't know. Will, what, what, are you, what are you thinking? What are you taking? What side of the bet are you taking on this? I think when life would get a lot more troublesome if Bitcoin went to a million dollars. Like I think a lot of things in the U.S. would fall apart if we saw a flight to Bitcoin that quick and that fast. There's a lot of things. I agree, actually. So this kid, I can't, I can't stop thinking about him looking like one of those, uh, those what are they called? We, we characters? The Nintendo Wii. <laughs> he look, he's like he's he's straight up like the poster child of one of those characters, but he's actually extremely smart. Things are gonna go wrong if that occurs. Like the entire banking system would have to collapse. A lot of people would be rushing the doors of Bitcoin trying to get more sat. Be a bunch of ranch attacks. It would not be a fun time at all. So I, I think I agree with what you said, Zach, and what a lot of people have been saying on Twitter. Like this is the most expensive Twitter ad ever purchased. He's definitely getting a lot of traction out there. It's time for Bellagio to be in the spotlight again. And for good reason, right? There's a lot of things happening in the banking sector right now. That being said, some of his other tweets about it have been fairly misleading. So I, I don't know if I'm really like going to jump on the bandwagon here. I do hope Bitcoin goes to a million dollars, but I hope it's like in an orderly fashion where everyone can onboard to Bitcoin in a safe way and not everyone's going to get completely rugged by USD. Will, are you talking about the crypto industry, the Bitcoin industry happening in an orderly fashion where things are calm, cool, and collective, and there's no volatility, yeah. there's no drama, there's no issues? I, I mean, know, a lot to is, ask. Isn't this, why, isn't this why we Bitcoin is because we've got some sort of, <laughs> we're not right up here? I don't know, man. I don't know. There's just too much fun happening in this industry. I, mean, I, agree with you. I like this whole conversation. Go ahead, Zach. No, I mean, he says it's sort of like, you know, you mentioned it's the biggest Twitter ad of all time. I mean, Balaji himself is saying, hey, this is sort of an educational effort, right? You know, you got to get to Bitcoin, folks. Like, this should catch your attention. And therefore, maybe if it induces more people to at least consider this thing, then maybe it's mission accomplished. Maybe it's a million dollars or $2 million well spent. I will throw in a quick note. I mean, I think in terms of the bet are to be paid in USDC. Let's hope that USDC... Uh, is around for this to settle. I mean, should you know, not should that chance. fall not under for like future scrutiny? I'm not, fun, Zach. not, not there, to there's the no SEC, chance that like, guy's paying you know, it out if he loses or real, as we saw with getting it if he wins. So, something just you know, just putting that in there, putting that in there in this story. Wow. Will, last thoughts to you though. All right, there's no more last thoughts. That's it. That's all I'm gonna do about that because uh, that was. Yeah, quite interesting to say the least, but we all pretty much know it's not going to happen. And this is the last one I want to go over. So this says Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis uh, proposes a lot of banned CBDCs. So I want to see 
what they have to say about this. I didn't get a chance to actually read it out or listen to it fully, but let's, uh, yeah, let's see what they got to say. And then we're going to get into the main video today with Allcoin Daily and BitBoy or Ben Armstrong from we're talking about CBDCs you know that I'm a big CBDC bull so it really saddens me to see Florida Governor Ron DeSantis propose a yeah we're gonna have to have Hawk Crypto go talk to this guy again I think he has a picture with him so get on it Hawk oh it's a ban CBDCs in Some his BS. state even before the thing exists CBDCs obviously central bank digital currencies they've sort of become a boogeyman uh, in some corners of the crypto world and now apparently on the national political stage he actually even called them sort of the big brothers digital dollar so big brother there alluding to 1984 and to widespread surveillance of the u.s have a good day at work, Max. anyway this is interesting to see cbdc's find a national political spotlight with a republican hopeful i think in the 2024 presidential campaign so this is wild cbdc is getting fully politicized i'm going to toss it to will for his thoughts what do you think yeah, this is really weird. Uh, I didn't expect this to actually be like an issue on states' rights front. I mean, it's been sort of a Republican hallmark since the South flipped in the 1960s, and they really pushed the states' rights issues. And that's seeming to be like the next states' rights thing is the CBDCs or the currency, right? And another history corner, there's a long history in the United States of individual states trying to vie against the federal government and its ability to enact a different or form of currency on all the 50 states combined. So this is this is a long history within the United States of being a hot button issue. On the DeSantis front, I think that's really where this is coming about. I think DeSantis is pushing this issue forward because in 2024, CBDCs could be a key tenant of either party's platform, right? It's going to be in their playing set. Hey, we are pro-CBDC or anti-CBDC. I think that could really be a thing here. And the Republicans, I think, are pretty anti-CBDC. We've seen a lot of different Republicans come out against it, uh, including Tom Emmer, who's the head of the blockchain caucus in D.C. On the uh, Democratic front, they seem to be a little bit more pro. I wouldn't say all the way pro. Like, there's some Democrats who are definitely not necessarily pro CBDC, but the Biden administration is investigating using CBDCs. And we have this Fed Now program coming out in the summer, which mimics a lot of what a CBDC could look like so to see to say just throw this out there on one hand it is sort of states rights thing with florida being a pretty deep red at this point but i think it really just bleeds into what he's looking for in 2024 possibly running against joe biden i'll throw it over to you wendy i think that this is actually a good thing um another um, comment that I will make because, you know, I pay attention to what people say on all social media platforms and I'm on TikTok and I talk about a CBDC often. I and TikTok. up until like, up until so the annoying. banking crisis happened, people were saying, no, we don't want a CBDC. It's bad. We don't want it, et cetera. Oh, my hair is all crazy in the back. I love it. Anyways, um, but now I'm starting to see people say, we want Fed now, we want a CBDC, we need it, the banking system is so flawed, this is going to fix it. So the brainwashing is working 100%. And I actually, I don't agree with DeSantos on all his policies, but I do agree with him on this. I think his CBDC is dangerous, it is detrimental. And they have been working on studying a CBDC since before 2018. And I think there's a, um, a program from NIST where they were studying Bitcoin to possibly be a CBDC. But again, with the banking collapse in, in the United United States, this is just a perfect storm to kind of usher in a CBDC. And a lot of people don't understand what's at stake here. And of course, because the United States loves to pick blue or red, they just can't look at both parties and pick things that they like from them or things that they dislike. They just are automatically so negative. People are going to automatically assume that this is a red issue and it's just going to cause a lot more um, separation in the U.S. when we should all be fighting together against the CBDC because they are dangerous. So real quick in the chat, um, Closet Miner actually asked, um, what do you say? Why do they say Republicans are against CBDCs? Does that, you ask, are you, is that like a, are you trying to give me like a dad joke right here? CBDCs will kill capitalism, said Kyle Rosa. So realistically, it's just, they're saying that they're going to use it as like part of their political party thing, right? Like they're going to be pro or anti cbdc so it's going to be kind of interesting but i just thought this was neat because it kind of hits home it's in the u.s one of the states governors or whatever he's trying to you know ban these before they even start so it's just interesting but they're convenient the government can airdrop me money into my account with a cbdc so you and take my taxes bribes. Mm. so you, and take you can bribes. just tax me no so it's called bribes. it's no, it's called like aid payments and stuff like that remember when COVID no, hit everybody got checks so wait if you the receive city? a COVID 
If you received a stimmy check, you've been bribed by the U.S. government. I, we I, actually, I, found um, I fundamentally I actually, disagree. We actually didn't cash ours because, um, yeah, my, my daughter's father was very, 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 very much against it. Well, I bought Bitcoin uh, and I'm up quite a bit. So I, I think there you should have cashed in on that. Uh, I want to go back yeah, to sure. what we're talking about with the state's rights. Wait, thing, I think on. it is interesting. She said she didn't. She said she didn't cash the stimulus check that she got from the government during COVID. That's kind of why wouldn't you just buy Bitcoin with it? That's like what so many people did. And you would have made so much money. That's crazy. Interesting. My daughter's father. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly they're not together anymore. Ah. Eh. All right, I'm going to leave that one alone. Never mind. Here, it kind of bleeds into what you're saying, Wendy, <laughs> is the fact you that we could have chat. just different states issue their own CBDCs. Like that's sort of like a like a really off kilter idea here. Yeah. All right. You know, we're going to, we're going to elaborate on that a little bit. Yankee says liar, and I also agree, liar. You know, he definitely cashed it and didn't tell her about it. That's what happened. All but right, it does saying. sort of like bleed into what DeSantis is saying here, and the fact that like. They're anti CBDC <laughs> because they want to have like this pro Florida stance that represents their rights. And what if we see a world where other states are pro CBDC and what do they want their currencies to look like? So I think like this headline and coming from them really just comes from the fact that like people are going to have different political takes on money going to the next 20, 30 years because of what tokenization allows us to do. And this first headline from Florida is only the first. We're going to see so many different states roll out their own programs for tokenization, for CBDCs, or things that are similar like this. And they're going to be on both sides of the agenda. Interesting. Well, shout out to Coindesk for that. All right, let's get over and watch the main video today because I'm interested in this. I want to see what's actually said about it. I'm going to be honest with you here. I have nothing against Ben Armstrong, right? He is obviously one of the biggest YouTubers in the crypto space, but he gets himself in hot water. So I'm not on either side of this fence, right? I'm just in the middle. All right. I want to see what happens in this video. Let's see what he says or what he runs himself over with. Let's go. It took me nine years to become a millionaire in crypto. What I like to do is kind of like educate people and, and shortcut their process based on how many mistakes that I made. It can definitely be done in one year if you understand what you're doing. The number one thing that I see people do that are newer to crypto that have been in for less than four years to make mistake, mistake after mistake that drains their portfolio is... And he cuts it. Damn it. No, I'm just kidding. They're going to play it through. This is All Coin Daily. Shout out to them for this video. Obviously, I'll leave a link down in the description below for all these channels that we watched today. Ben Armstrong is a self-made millionaire in crypto, author of Catching Up to Crypto and host and founder of one of the biggest crypto channels on YouTube. Today, Ben shares his top three tips and tricks on how you can become a millionaire in cryptocurrency in one year. Without further ado, BitBoy Crypto. Great to have you on the channel today. My audience knows you, cryptocurrency knows you, some people, though, are going to be thinking, you know, what gives BitBoy the authority to talk about becoming a millionaire? And I don't think they know that you started from the bottom and now you're here. So before we jump into it, could you take us through how you became successful? Because a lot of people don't know. Feel free to brag a little bit. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, I went from zero to 100 kind of quick. Maybe not real quick. But kind of quick. Uh, look, uh, my name's Ben Armstrong. I have been, this is like my biggest flex right here, what I'm about to say. This is my second. Before he says it, I do have to say, I feel like he could sell salt to a slug. He's one of those guys, like car salesman type, but he's his own. Decade in crypto. I'm in now in my second decade of being in the world of crypto. And that doesn't mean that I bought Bitcoin early and I got rich and I've been sitting on an island ever since. Uh, it means that, uh, you know, it took me nine years. It took me nine years to become a millionaire in crypto. Uh, I went through a lot of mistakes. Um, I, I lost all my money twice in the world of crypto. Uh, once through, you know, selling it in Mt. Gox and then later on in 2017 by riding to the top and then going all the way back down to the bottom in 2018. So um, I, I've kind of done it all. Uh, you know, I, I'm now am doing very well financially and I'm able to kind of like invest technically. I think I'm probably an accredited investor um, by the archaic and accredited investor laws we have in this country. Um, but like I'm there now, but I also was right where everybody else was, you know, just a regular guy. I have a family, you know, I've got three kids. I was living paycheck to paycheck, kind of stumbled into this whole world. And, um, you know, it, in my opinion, it's kind of like 
doing every step along the way, um, you know, the way that it probably should be done by a regular person, what gives me the ability to be able to, to talk and connect with people, um, you know, but wherever you're at on your uh, journey in crypto. Mm -hmm. So you did it in nine years. Do you think it's possible to do it in one? Yeah. Well, I mean, the reality is, even though it took me nine years, like it was really the eighth to ninth year, <laughs> you know, they're really um, where I made all my money. And basically and by eighth and ninth year, he means like the last bull run. So if you just buy it in the shit market and wait, you most likely make money. What I like to do is kind of like educate people and, and shortcut their process based on how many mistakes that I made. Because if I would have made any mistakes, if I would have made zero mistakes, um, it would have taken me uh, one year tops to become a millionaire in crypto. If I would have taken all my money, I was buying Bitcoin to spend on a software for a business I ran. So if instead of doing that, if I would have just bought the Bitcoin and kept it, then I would have been a millionaire in about a year. Uh, the price went from you know twelve dollars all the way up to uh, I can't remember where it peaked out. I think I sold mine around three hundred dollars. Uh, so that was about a thirty x from where I bought it. My first Bitcoin purchase. Um, was four hundred and fifty dollars for thirty seven bitcoin, so about twelve bucks a piece. If I just would have sat on that in the peak of the bull run this last time, that alone would have been worth, uh, you know, three million dollars. But that's like that's no different than saying like if we knew about bitcoin back in you know two thousand nine or two thousand thirteen or whatever, like yeah, we'd all be rich. All right, well let's let's get to how you really make money. So please. the the point is, if you fast forward to twenty seventeen, it, it I got in I got. Full, full time in crypto, I guess, like all in on crypto, a little bit too late inside the run. Uh, in 2017, for the first half of the year, I was looking at Bitcoin like, I think the price is going up a little bit. Like maybe this thing isn't over because I thought Mt. Gox killed Bitcoin, you know, in 2014. I was like, ah, this thing's over, you know. And I just started thinking, man, I made so many mistakes. I should have got more in. But then in the back half of 2017, when the price started really shooting up, I was like, I got to jump all in right now. If I would have if I would have had the education, here's the important thing people need to understand. If I would have had the education and understood what I was investing in, I would have been able to be a millionaire like five or six different years alone. <laughs> like just, just alone. Like I could have said 2016, I could have become a millionaire. 2017, you know, 2020, 2012, 2013, you know, could have been so easy for me, but I made it hard on myself because I didn't understand. And also the educational resources weren't really available back then that they are now. I remember in 2013, like trying to look up what is Bitcoin. I was like, who is this Japanese guy? And why does he have all these miners on his property? Like I didn't even understand it, you know? So uh, I think for really, uh, you know, it can definitely be done in one year. If you understand what you're doing, the problem is too many people come in, they just start throwing money at ticker symbols because this guy said it's popular and they don't really do the research themselves to understand like, what what's the difference in investing in something like Sh uh, SHIB or SHIBA and then investing in something like Ethereum or Cardano? There's a drastic difference, but people kind of look at them the same when they're uneducated. And I know everybody wants, you know, quick tips and tricks, how to become a millionaire. I think one thing everybody should do is follow BitBoy, follow Altcoin Daily for the continued exposure and information because it's really going to come with a more complex understanding. So make sure you follow BitBoy, make sure you follow Altcoin Daily. But with that being said, Benjamin, let's get practical. Let's get doable. Benjamin. What, what tips and tricks do you have for somebody who wants, who's hungry? <laughs> yeah. Well, the, number one, like I said, so get education. Like we'll just, that, that's just a standard you got to do. Number two, you know, this is very simple yet it defies the logic of the psychology that goes into a market. Buy in the red, sell in the green. And it's amazing, no matter how oh, many wow. times I hear that myself. So we have a weekly portfolio video we do every Friday where we have some sample portfolios. Did anybody know that? Sell, sell high, buy low. Did anybody know that? Or is that like a secret thing that he just taught us right there? It was a 1000 5000 10000 $25,000 sample portfolio. We have real money in them, but they're really just for our audience to kind of track along and see, you know, if they want to mimic those strategies they can. Of course, they're not financial advice. Uh, or if they want to take the strategies that we use and kind of just kind of, you know, build their own strategy around it, that's good. But one thing that's really interesting is just maybe about six weeks ago, I was in Boston for our, our, our uh, Catching Up to Crypto uh, book tour. And I was at Crypto Lifer's house. He's another YouTuber. When I'm out of town, like sometimes I like to go stream with some other people. And so I went to his house and I did my portfolio video that Friday from his house. And it was the day the Bitcoin was like 
rocketing. Like stuff was flying up. Like ICP was killing it. Optimism was killing it. Like all these altcoins were just killing it. Bitcoin was like right about 25,000. It was doing great. And man, it felt good for the first time since we built these strategies or these uh, portfolios back in August, they were all in the green. And I was like, man, this is great. We are crushing it. Sell Feels it all. good. Let's wait to do something next week. And then the next week comes around and I said, you know, when I that's called greed, my friends, if you didn't know, I was feeling good. That's when we should have sold. <laughs> like when I was feeling good about where the portfolio was, that's when I should have said, all right, let's take profits. So two weeks later, what happens is same thing. A, a bunch of projects fly up in price. And I say, you know what? Even though it feels like this is pump is going to continue here, we're going to take profits on a lot of our coins. Like ICP was one that like, I think we were up two or three times on our money. And so like we sold 25% of that out of our portfolio and we bought. Listen, back in the day, ICP used to stand for Insane Clown Posse. You guys remember that group? <laughs> Filecoin and we bought, uh, I believe we bought Con uh, Conflux with it. Conflux is up 100% since we bought it. So it's this constant game of like kind of lily padding, like jumping from this gain to this coin that's in the red. And then when you get back in the gains, jumping back and doing it all again. I, I think that's really, really a, a good strategy for people. It's the only way that you're going to take a defined amount of money and turn it into the maximum amount. If you just sit and hold, you're going to make money in crypto. History has shown that over time. If you're in crypto for more than four years, you're going to do well. That's what the stats show. Not guaranteed to continue in the future, but that's the history. So with all that being said, you know, you can hold or hodl as we say, but if you're selling in the green and you're buying in the red all the way through the cycle, uh, that's when, in my opinion, you're going to have the optimum chance for success to become a millionaire. It sounds simple. Wow. That was amazing. It just is life changing. But like you said, human words. psychology, a lot of people, yep. you know, miss, miss that people simple don't thing. Do it. And it is hard to do because obviously in it's hard for us. It's yeah. It's hard for us to do, even though we know it, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, something else, Ben, is, or I have a specific thing, but is there another practical yeah. doable? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Um, here, here's a, another good strategy in, in my opinion, the, the, to really gain money, to become a millionaire, you really have to, you got to have some good picks. You got to have probably, it depends on how much you start with. You start with a hundred thousand, you should be able to get there. You start with 10,000, you're going to have to have some stuff kind of fall and break your way throughout the run where you're going to have to have like a coin like Solana, not, not a great way to put money in now, I think, but you know, we were talking about Solana when it was a dollar, it went all the way up to 250 or Cardano. We were talking about when it was two cents, it went all the way up to $3. Like those are easy wins that are going to be able to crush your portfolio. But one of, one thing people have to, Keep in mind when you're trying to become a millionaire is not necessarily how are you adding, but how are you preventing your losses? Because that's really big. The number one thing that I see people do that are newer to crypto that have been in for less than four years that make mistake, mistake after mistake that drains their portfolio is thinking to yourself, oh, I'm just going to move over to stables right now. Right. Like, oh, Bitcoin's dropping. I'm going to move over to stables. I'm going to move over to USDC and the Bitcoin will continue to drop. And then I'll put the money in down the road. Well, is a bear market strategy, that's a good strategy. If you, once again, sell Bitcoin in the green at the top of a market or, or within 20 to 30% of the top over to stables and you write it all the way down, then you can really enhance your Bitcoin holdings. I'm talking about more on the micro level to where like, oh, you know, this big thing happened in, in China where they talked about a Bitcoin man, uh, ban. Let's go ahead and sell over to stables. By the time the news hits the market a lot of times and, and people are starting to get that idea of like, oh, it's going to go down a lot. Like I need to move over to stables. That's the best way to lose. That's the best way to lose. I've seen it over. I, I've done this mistake, you know, several, several years ago, 2017, 2018. I made this mistake all the time. Last market, I really didn't do this um, because I learned this lesson. What will happen is, is, is let's say the price of Bitcoin is at $40,000 and you see, oh, there's this huge bad news coming out about this ETF or about China. Like, let me go ahead and take this Bitcoin and move it over to stables at $40,000. And you're hoping the price goes down to 30 or 35 and you're able to buy back in. What happens is the news is like a delayed indicator. A lot of times it's already been moving that direction because some people, some of the big players probably knew that stuff was already baked in. And what happens is well, that's true. you end up moving stables on Bitcoin over at $40,000 and the price goes to 50. And instead of making money on the price of Bitcoin moving, You've just lost 20% of your Bitcoin holdings with the same amount. So well, that you didn't lose it, right? You took it out and you just secured it at that point, right? You didn't lose it, but you could have gained more. Now, 
if you just wait, it'll eventually probably come back down. That's how I look at it. I would say, like, to me, those are two principles that, like, I really think people have got to take in. Number one is buying the green or buying the red, selling the green. Oh, thanks. Number two, be very careful moving your money over to stables, thinking you're smarter than the rest of the market. Well, like, it comes down to being patient. Patience is, like, key, right? That's number one. And number two, for me, is greed. You need to know the limit. Like, you need to not be completely greedy. And again, that fear and greed index that I show at the beginning of these streams, that is a good indicator to tell you where the market's at. If it's an extreme greed and the market's just pumping, it's it's going up 60,000 Bitcoin. You know, people, when you see it up there, like Warren Buffett says, buy when people are fearful and sell when people are greedy. That's just, it's a good indicator to look at, at least in my opinion. And if you guys appreciate us having the real conversations, smash the like button. I'll say it. Uh, this is what I'm wondering, Ben, and I don't know the answer to this, but I'm wondering. Thanks. Thanks, Aaron. Yeah, guys, hit that like button, please. Appreciate you for hanging take out. On it. Does your strategy change in the beginning versus when you get closer to the million mark? Like, is there a difference in what you're doing in the very beginning versus when you're when you're getting close to a million or is it exactly the same? Uh, that's a great question. I, I, I don't think you look being a millionaire is cool. Like, I can't front like I'm not going to flex on you and be like, <laughs> oh, man, like I wish I was, a you know, a, a 70,000 air like no. His balls are definitely in his wife's purse. I don't care what he says. Listen to him talking about that. Stop it right now. Don't flex. Like, he's like, I'm not going to flex on you, but I'm going to flex on you. Oh, like, I like being a millionaire, <laughs> so multi-millionaire. It's, it's nice. Like, it feels good. It, it's years and years of validation and work um, or, or years and years of work validated that got me here. And so there's a lot of cool stuff about it. However, the difference between having $950,000 and $1,050,000 is not that dramatically different, right? So to more me, money, more problems. once you get towards Remember the million that. dollar mark, if you're changing your strategy, you're not really doing it right. You should always be looking to maximize your wins and minimize your losses. I think in the world of Bitcoin, it's very interesting um, because the way that the cycles work, right? Like generally what we should be looking at and you know the bear market is bared it out, no pun intended, is one year of down action, which is last year, one year of kind of slight upward sideways action, which is this year. And, and then next year, about halfway through the year, we should finally start seeing things you know go, go parabolic. In 2025, the price of Bitcoin should be really, really, really high. You're, you need to be operating against that timeline. You don't need to be operating against where your money is at that moment. If you're sitting at $200,000 and we're halfway through 2025, you're probably not going to get to a million at that point, just with the way that the time-wise the, the cycles uh, work out. You, you just have to know that the, the more important part is where you're putting your money in during the different parts of the cycle. Like uh, that does change, right? So right now we're just getting into quarter two and quarter three um, of this year. I was told by some big venture capital uh, hedge fund guys that quarter two and quarter three is when you can look to make your best altcoin investments. Um, this is when you're looking for like, okay, we know Cardano is going to win. We know XRP is going to win as long as they win the case. Like we know Ethereum is going to Oh, we couldn't tell what the, is, is this, is this any, what is this one up here? Is that Cardano? I don't even know. But XRP Army, his little helmet back here. Yeah, he's a huge XRP advocate, if I'm not mistaken. Up, tokenomics are phenomenal. We know Bitcoin is going to go up. Like we know, we generally know those about the top coins, right? So I've been really encouraging people over the last year to really be stacking up those top coins. Build, build, build. Now it's time to start looking a little further down coin market cap and looking at some of the niches that will have some big winners. So layer two, right? We know Arbitrum, we know Optimism, we know Polygon. They're going to do really well. Um, you know, you look at some of the AI niche, you look at Singularity, AGIX, you look at uh, some of these other coins, that uh, you know, Fetch.ai, maybe GRT. There's some really good ones over there as well. And, and so you start looking a little bit further down in those niches and find, maybe find some coins that you haven't necessarily heard of that you can do research on and find some other winners in those niches. This is the time to start doing that quarter two and quarter three of this year. Um, so I, I think it's really your strategy should change based on where you're at in the cycle, not based on how much money you have. You know, like I, I think I had a million dollars in my portfolio for the first time on uh, new year's Eve of 2020. So it was it was really cool. Like I still had plenty of the run left too. You know, we had almost all of 2021 to really get up there. And it happened real quick. He just said he hit a million dollars in his portfolio, whatever, whatever timeline he said. But I want to know what you guys would do, right? If you hit a million dollars in your crypto portfolio, 
would you just let it ride or would you start taking profits and what would you do with those profits let me know in the chat i'm super interested because personally what i would do is my goal is to get enough money in my portfolio to pay off my house once i pay off my house it's all coming out i don't give a shit like it's all coming out paying it off paying off all debt anything we have is gone i'm wiping it out and i'll start over i don't care what happens that's that's my main goal so i want to know what your guys goal is in the chat if you would it'd be great happened quick like it went it was only about three months that i turned you know i, I was probably sitting around i bought a house and i think i was probably around one hundred and fifty thousand in crypto at that time and within three months that 150 turned into uh turned into a million so you just got to understand where you're at in the cycle and you have to understand when to take profits in the cycle when to accumulate in the cycle and then what kind of coins to accumulate based on where you're at i appreciate you coming on i think this has been great i know the audience wants more and we'll give them more but at a future date so make sure you subscribe my final thing, I guess, Ben, is just, you know, final thoughts, last piece of advice. Is there one more thing or just general final thoughts? What's going on with you for the Altcoin Daily audience? Yeah, I mean, the world of crypto is crazy. <laughs> There's a lot of interesting stuff that happens uh, on a daily basis. And um, right now, the thing that we're all looking at is these bank runs and the insolvency of banks. And, and I think that really when you're looking at trying to become a millionaire, like that's great, right? Like everybody kind of in their heart, like wants to be at a place where you're doing well financially, um, you know, unless you're, you know, somebody that just wants to not have any money, which there's some certain people out there like that. But when it comes to the banks and the insolvencies, this is where you really start to see that crypto is about more than just making the money. You know, it really is about protecting yourself and protecting your family for the future. And when you realize like, oh yeah, all banks are insolvent and that's actually their business plan. You can learn how to start opting out of the system. One thing I've gone through is signature bank was my bank. Actually, uh, they're one of the only banks that would bank me um, wow, because wow. of, uh, you know, different dealings with crypto, uh, you know, Coinbase wire and in 2020 to buy a house is actually what uh, BBNT used to close my bank accounts. And so I've been looking for a way to kind of opt out of the banking system. And I think what the last uh, couple of weeks have shown is that crypto is great. You can make money with crypto. But it's about more than that. And it's about can you actually make the move and opt yourself out of an archaic broken system? And that's what I'm on the on the uh you know the course to do right now. So um I'm not getting a new bank account. Uh, I'm you know, when signature closes my account, it's done. And uh, I'm gonna be learning how to live crypto only. So really suggest to everybody else, like if that's not your plan, that's fine. But really i encourage everybody when it comes to the education not don't just get educated about crypto and how to make money get educated on what this whole thing really stands for and uh why so many of us so passionately believe in it well shout out to all coin daily and ben armstrong bitboy crypto for that i guess the moral of the story is just to buy low and sell high that was that's all we learned that's all i learned anyways i'm assuming you guys all learned the same thing oh it's terrible all right well anyways this is uh yeah, I don't know. But anyways, my goal, right, when it comes to crypto, I love it. I do believe in it long term. I think Bitcoin's going to go far. Um, but at the end of the day, I've got into this hobby slash, um, I guess, ruined my life in a sense, right, with crypto to potentially pay off my house. That's my goal. I went into it with a goal, with a mindset that as soon as I get to a point to pay off everything we have, everything you know that's just around that we need not that this much there's not much more than my house to be honest but it's just in general that alone i want to just pay it off like that is my goal if i meet my goal with crypto i'll continue in the crypto journey but in the next couple of years that is my my main goal and i hope you guys have the same thing like always have in a, a mindset to get out because if you don't you're going to put yourself in a hole or you're just going to continue to ride it up and ride it down or as um, who, who said it, Chris Hanley, I think, said he's going to put it in like a trust fund for his kids and stuff. Like if you're not wanting to cash it out, if you're totally financially fine and you have, you know, money for all your bills, you have a full time job or whatever you do in general, if you can just afford to sit on it, then, yeah, I totally agree. Sit on it because you're most likely going to make money over time. But stay in good coins, right? Don't just invest in a whole bunch of ish because then you're going to turn yourself into a it's, it's going to turn into a nightmare for you at some point, I'm sure because there's gonna be regulation. Uh, just uh, we don't know when, right? Now, not financial advice, but that's just all my own personal opinions. Go into it with a goal. Uh, one million is nothing. Yeah, no, exactly. One million is not really much, but for me, like I don't need much to pay off my house. And that's my goal. It's not, it's not to get rich. It's once I get all of my assets all situated, 
what's like what do i need money for you know what i mean you can't take any of this with you when you die like you can't i know you want to so I, I watched something actually it's pretty neat it was um this oh what the hell's his name i don't even remember his name anyways he was watching a video and he kind of elaborated on it a little bit and he said that you, you you continuously chase right bigger houses and all this stuff but at the end of the day none of it matters when you when you die you can't take anything with you and even though you want to set up your kids and you know your kids kids for future like benefits like take that 20 20 generations down the line you're no longer like ba you're barely related to these people you know what i mean and it kind of put a lot of things into perspective thinking about it that way but obviously you want to set your kids off on the right path so if i can give them all my stuff debt free here you go have it that's it it's all that matters to me you know because me myself and the wife we have rental properties if, as long as we can pay all that stuff off it's like here you go each kid gets a house we're out <laughs> you know what i mean they're happy they're fine they're set and they still gotta still gotta work to make their own whatever they want you know that's kind of how it goes as long as i can house them feed them make them happy for the rest of their life that is my my goal all right someone's saying ckb was popping and the wife's not going to work so i can go a little longer we'll go for about i don't know another 10 minutes or so ckb up 10.3 percent what happens if i click on this it just tells me nervous network let's see oh so let's do that let's see so it's at it's not even a cent though right hold on let's uh, let's go here we'll just type it in here ckb my mother-in-law has three rental houses one for each of her kids yeah that's that's the plan man that's the plan that is the plan but i do eventually want to move somewhere where it's not as expensive as here it's crazy man absolutely crazy we pay like 14 grand a year in taxes just taxes that's like 1100 dollars on top of our mortgage every month that we have to pay to live in this you know this part of the earth stupid 0.006 so we're at yeah so it hit up to 0063 now it's at 0062 i mean it's still pumping nonetheless what was the all-time high for this again four cents tkb at four cents and this is um is this why am i getting this confused this isn't um oh conflux that's what i'm confusing it with how's conflux doing cfx 37 cents has there been any news with this lately do you guys know any bit been any other news with uh the whole sim card thing stuff over in china let me know come to iowa I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I could go to Iowa. Is there anything there besides you? Be real with me. Be real with me. Is there anything there? Look at this. Look, they got a Bitcoin game. Slot machines. Perfect. Go get scammed right over there. Click on it. Move to the UK. Zero chance. No way. Absolutely not. <laughs> My K7 miner is doing good. All right, let's look. So we looked a little bit yesterday. What were the most profitable miners? Uh, Let's go to mine the ASIC. K7. So the K7, surprisingly, is been top of the charts for a while. This actually, you know what? Mr. Crypto Mining Insider. How do you feel about the KA3 now? Now that they've kind of uh just they're, they're in ninth place here. Right? And if anybody didn't know over here, they have an efficiency tab. It gives you the most efficient miner out of all of them. And the K7 is still in third, which is pretty interesting. The L7 is up here. Where's the KDA on the K7? I mean, K7. The, um, wow. Yeah, the KDA miner, whatever the hell it is. Is it even here? What's happening? Am I blind? The KA3 is nowhere. Where are you? All right, maybe it's just not on this list. Or I'm just blind. I'm probably blind. No chance. No chance I just blew past it like that. Oh, I mean, it is. There is a chance, right? Oh, no, it's a BMK3. What the hell? Hmm. Oh, God, I did blow by it. 17th. Jeez. 17th on the efficiency scale. Huh. How did I blow past it like that? But it's ninth on the profitability. How do you feel about it, man? 
speechless on the ka3 yeah man it's like it's it's kind of uh heart-wrenching right it sucks or gut-wrenching rather so i was talking about it yesterday a little bit in yesterday's stream i had somebody that i know they sold everything everything to buy kda miners or the ka3 specifically 166 terahash this guy right here and um it's sad i feel bad because like dude it's it's making five bucks a day like let's see at my rate you're losing a dollar 69 a day so you're it, anything over 22 cents you're losing money on this ka3 and i mean hopefully you're not mining at 22 cents you know what i mean but 15 or the the average that we see around the space now is 17 and you're only getting four dollars and 36 cents a day that's i mean this miner what is it uh let's see let's go to the calculator right four hold on how much is this miner we did this yesterday i'm just gonna go off this price even though i know you can get it cheaper seven eight ninety nine right seven eight nine nine we're gonna divide that by what was it let's see at 17 cents we're gonna say divide it by was so 4.36 i think this is how you do it it'll take you 1800 days divided by 365 it took you ugh, never gonna pay this thing off you're never gonna pay this thing off is that legit is that how you do that i think right that's how you do the math does that make sense to me it took you five years to pay this thing off i mean that's if you paid that right say you paid 6k for it let's say 6,000. again i divide it if i'm not mistaken this is how i do it if i'm doing it wrong let me know but you divide it by right the four uh 36 gives you that and then i could do it by the year 365 3 3.7 almost four years that's insane tell me that's not tell me that's that's correct math right anybody in the chat don't feel bad it was their choice people are too stubborn to listen to diversification advice yeah retro mike no you're right man they should have invested in a pigeon coin i've been telling them forever <laughs> oh way too fast for you what's up buddy you are correct sir yeah that's what i thought right so i don't know i personally ada caspa even ckb the nervos network like handshake all these coins i've never even deep dove into them i don't even i don't invest in them so i don't care right like litecoin i personally i don't think litecoin's going anywhere <clears throat> i think it's only going to gain value over time it's super fast super secure it's just it is ease of use and people use litecoin like there is a specific like e every place literally takes litecoin as payment so it's just i don't know i would invest into something like this to be honest I'm not even sure what uh let me see musk miners i'll check them out see what they got for their miners now how much they're selling them for we're going to be going over this stuff tomorrow afternoon as well i have a whole google doc sheet with lists uh, list prices of asics at all different sites so if you guys are in the hunt for asics we can uh show you the cheapest place to get them and obviously there's no sponsor or anything along those lines for that sheet it's literally all cut and dry just everything we find on the internet for sites that we actually use and uh yeah it'll give you the cheapest place to get it but 8145 is this the cheapest i've seen on the l7 9050 i think it is i don't think it's gotten down to 7,000. that's pretty cheap though i don't remember uh i don't know who's cheaper than that actually i think kaboom racks was or something whatever the hell that place is called Great Baldini, what's up? Thanks for being here, man. Look at you. Look at you. I feel like I missed like three birthdays. I haven't seen you in forever. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. Hopefully the new job's awesome. He plays with balls all day. This guy. That's pinball machines, but same thing, right? <laughs> um, this uh, this is kind of neat, though. The, the L7's the one I got, and I have it on low power mode right now. And it's actually a super efficient miner. It'd be kind of cool if they gave the option of low power mode here, though, so you could see the efficiency rating, like clicking on that. The L7, let's see where it's even at. 
the 9050. So right here, you can see the 9050 is at 0.266 for an efficiency rating. And actually on low power mode, it bumps it up to mine was actually on the top of the list. Uh, I think it was 337. So it would be like third on the list in low power mode. So that's what I have. And I'm actually going to be doing a full out um, spreadsheet with an entire month in the L7, the 9050. I think mine averages around 9200 giga hash, right? Or mega hash rather, 9200. So it, I'm going to do a whole list of 30 days on full power, right? Doing like the whatever it is, 3000, 3400 watts. And then I'm going to do a whole month on low power mode and it should be done soon. Uh, Rick, tell Chump to go all in on KDA mining. Zero chance. Zero chance. What's up, Mr. Matt Electron? Good to see you, buddy. I was just talking about how I feel bad for people and the uh, the overall, the KA3 issue, right? What's even at, actually? Let's look at Kadena. Let's go to it. Let's check. Just for shits. We'll go over this stuff this afternoon as well. I'm actually going to be getting out of here shortly under a dollar interesting what was it at oh it was up around a dollar 20 90 days let's see oh damn yeah so i mean this is this is why it's this is all the hype when everybody was buying those ka3s right and then uh damn now it's under a buck that's tough i mean this this was a dump that people probably got nervous about but again, you guys gotta, I mean, you heard Ben Armstrong. I mean, it's easy to become a millionaire. You just gotta, you know, buy and buy the red and sell on the green. That's it. That's all you gotta do. Simple as that. Again, this is that crypto bubbles chart. If anybody's interested in checking it out, it's kind of neat. Look at Caspa over the year. <laughs> it just takes everything out. You can drag the bubbles around. It's kind of fun. Ooh, bitch. <laughs> This is insane, though. 6,388. This is in the top 200 coins. We go to the top 100. Casp is out. And these are all the coins that are taking it this week. Let's see. Let's go to the day. 2.1%. Well, oh, geez. They even blow up the, the negative. Jeez. Do your own research, said All Set Miner. 100%. That's right, Casp. But when, when Casp actually... Uh, has a use case then then I'll, I'll decide to look into it but i'm happy about ltc ltc is doing fantastic today apparently check it out 89 bucks doge is at seven cents we this was at nine cents need to get that back up once it gets back up we'll be happy about that xrp has been doing pretty good so i guess there's some positive news they should be uh hopefully winning their court case we're gonna see but i don't know when that actually comes out or not bought ipolos and jazz miner said steel city mining sold my kda miners Ooh, did you really interesting that's a juicy one holy hell so you sold the ka like this or the box miners and i mean if you go to the efficiency tab right these aren't out yet well the x4q is right um this one's out but this x16q is not look at that I actually have my X4Q going or mining BTC on a mineable right now because I want to stack some BTC. That's the only way to do it. And it was really cold down here. So yeah, I needed a foot warmer. Nothing's under my desk. It's perfect. It's perfect. And I actually have to go check out the X41U. That's actually down on my, uh, or in my solar trailer. And this is actually at 17 cents. Let's go to, let's see, 25 cents. 25 cents the x4 one u is still making me money at eight cents a day that's if it's mining etc and it is getting around 260 watts because it's running on 120 not 240. so that's that but it gets closer to 600 mega hash to be honest pretty neat but i mean this this uh this site's pretty sweet i do like this a lot so mineable coins Ooh, look at this look at this I never even clicked on that before. That's kind of neat. Go to KDA. See the miners. Oh, wow. What is this? MTA tested. What does MTA tested mean? What's that mean? Does anybody know? Anybody know in the chat? I want some financial advice. 
What would you spend 50k on? L sevens. Yeah, if I had 50k, I'd spend them on L sevens. Personally, not financial advice. I would spend them on L sevens, or I would honestly just purchase something like a coin, right? Well, I wouldn't do it right now. I, I want to see what the hell's gonna happen with the market, but once uh yeah i mean that's the only way to go the l7s right now are the only way to go if you're gonna buy anything but if you're gonna go and buy like a coin you know you could do that too if you're one of the people if you if you truly believe like like dogecoin let's be real okay dogecoin is a shit coin okay it's it's whatever it's faked it's made up it's easy payment though it's pretty quick to use right so it's simple but just nice um but it being tied in with LTC. If it wasn't tied in with LTC, I don't think I would uh, really be as much into Doge as I am. But I do believe it has potential to hit a dollar at some point. And that's just my personal opinion. It's not financial advice at all. It's just something that I do believe. I mean, it's been holding in the top eight or in the top 10 for ever, like a long time, right? And it's just, I don't know. Like th th even Shiba is not going to go anywhere. It's just crazy. It's uh, well, I can't really say that about cheaper, I guess, but Dogecoin, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. And the all time high 70, uh, what was it? 77 cents, I think, or around there, according to CoinGecko. Or was it 73 cents? Even if it gets to 50 cents, man, you're making a killing. You know what I mean? Put some friggin' money into that, man. Tax man can kiss my ass, said Diddy. <laughs> you wouldn't take a pawn on an F. No, FPGAs are trash. Absolute trash. If, if, right all right so if something dies or say like something's no longer mineable on the fpgas you have to wait for somebody to develop something else for it to be usable on and that's not something i want to deal with so fpgas are just they're they're out of the i i wouldn't even waste my time or thoughts or money on them ever l7 profits is mostly doge it is it is so in low power mode i get 0. 0.6 i think it's like yeah 0. 0.06 rather sorry 0 0.06 Litecoin and then Doge I get like 120 ish right now it was over 200 on full power mode and it's been dropping consistently between 170 and 200 and then I was getting 0.1 Litecoin every day on the regular mode so we're gonna see I might be switching it back to that eventually but even at 25 cents I'm still making money on it. it's kind of crazy it's absolutely crazy but either way guys this market's red today looking looking miserable is what it is andy and harvey of neoxa are going to be with hawk next week in case you didn't hear what do you mean be with hawk next week for what for what for their like their uh tuesday tara hash tuesday tickle me tuesday is that is that what you're talking about <laughs> patrick murphy is that what they're going on for yeah okay yeah yeah nice nice that's awesome. I'm glad. Now they're going to, man, King's going to get lit up. He was talking a lot of shit about Neoxa. They're not, they're not fans of King right now. That's interesting. Actually. When, when did that come to fruition? Did they like pop in the chat and say something? So when are we going to have a mega hash Monday? <laughs> Maybe someday King isn't going to be there. Oh, well that makes sense now. <laughs> that makes sense now. Oh my God. Interesting. Well, to tell Hawk how wrong he is about the project. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Doge profits are definitely dropping out. Yeah, it's because more people are getting into it, man. More people are buying Doge or not buying Doge, but more people are buying miners that mine Doge or it's the difficulty. When the difficulty raises to get more, you get less yield, you know, which is tough. Uh, CCXD, you know that most jazz miners are all FPGAs in them. Yeah, but in my defense they were sponsored units so i didn't like spend my money on them right i'm not uh i mean that's full transparency i would never lie to you guys right they sent those to us i mean even though i would buy these units i would the x4q i would definitely buy the one you is kind of paying the ass is loud as shit but if you can do the quiet mod like i did on my channel it's super uh i mean it's nice it works great it's it's literally so thin you can compact them literally on a rack nice and straight like one u it's it's super simple right but um the x4q i think is where it's at it's it's a bit more efficient it's just 
it's nicer all around and i do like etc i just think they need to have more done with them right uh so you think i should get some jazz miners too you could i mean look at this chart right we're gonna be getting out of here in a minute but i mean look at like i said look at the efficiency on these things right like it's it's they're one of the highest efficient units out there and well hold on though the this jazz miner right so the x4q again i i do love this the power this power is not right this is this is not correct um well actually hold on this is the 1.04 is this the one i have this is what i have yeah that's exactly what i have that wattage isn't right that wattage ain't right that's off so this is off but either way this if this unit is definitely still efficient it should be closer to 500 it's like four or something it's plus or minus 10 percent right but it's 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 around 450 almost 500 if you feed it with 120 and uh, i remember actually telling the hobbyists that you can run these on 120 so all of these units all the jazz miners they could be ran 240 or 120 you're not going to harm the units by at least trying and even if the psu inside it won't turn on for 120 you're you're going to be fine it's just when you feed it the other way if it's only good for 120 and you feed it with 240 you're going to blow something right so yeah that's that how good would it be at 8.6 cents let's see what this the jazz miner i mean we can go to nine cents i mean it says two dollars a day right but again this wattage is off so it'd probably be yeah it'd probably be closer to two but oh hold on we go nine cents right there yeah so it'd be closer to two bucks i would say let's just go to go to 11 yeah i'd say two bucks two bucks or so a day i mean the the, the point of them being quiet as hell is great they're supposed to be coming out with a btc miner though that's what i was gonna say before i elaborated a bit on the wattage um they're supposed to be coming out with a jazz miner that mines btc when that comes out i'm all over it i want that I want to see what that's about and i love the rack mountedness of this unit the only thing that sucks about these units is they're not wi-fi if these were wi-fi they would be like this would be my favorite miner hands down if they if they were uh yeah if they were wi-fi it'd be amazing i mean right now is the best time to buy one of these things because they they were going for like 10 grand or something crazy right is it jingle mining let's see let's just look because I don't know. Yeah, right here. Yeah, this is the unit I have. Yeah, same one. Same one. Yeah, they say 370 watts. It's not 370 watts. It's more than that. But whatever. I mean, this is not a bad deal. It's really not. The 20, what is it? Friggin' 2199. I mean, you can make a killing on these things, man. You could. The new one is going to be Wi Fi. Really? Interesting. So the new one, oh, the uh, 16, right? The X16, is that what you're talking about? Oh, or this one. What's this one? 1599, 3UZ, 340 watts. Oh, see, the only thing about this is the five gigs, but it'll still get you to like 20, 30 or something crazy. Let's see, DAG size. Uh, what am I doing? DAG size calculator. Let's go, let's check. Five gigabytes. So you're still uh, 2028 so five gigabytes on ethereum classic you're you're 2028 it says december right so 2029 ish but gauge it for like beginning of 2028 because the more they come online the less you know the faster it comes up whatever so you, these things will last you until at least then so i mean my personal plan if i had to you know situate these if i had a whole bunch of them i'd mine with them until like 2025 and sell them 100 percent, just because like doesn't make much sense to hold on to it at that point but i mean this this uh i don't know i probably would go for the bigger one just to be honest because it's almost same wattage i mean they advertise the same wattage which is telling me that it's probably it's probably pretty close to exactly what it is um this one right here though so this one's the wi-fi one this is the x16 i would love to get my hands on these honestly it's less than a thousand bucks more damn I'm gonna have to reach out to them and try one of these out these ones look kind of funny are they rack mountable actually they have to be i mean it says 3u yeah they have to be 
Interesting. 630 watts or so, it says, plus or minus 10%. 1845 plus or minus 10%. Efficiency ratio is 0.34, and the memory is 8 gigabytes. So, 8 gigabytes would be pretty good, right? Let's see what that's at. 8 gigabytes, 2038. Yeah, you guys are golden. Golden grams. If you want to uh, do that. I do have an affiliate link. Yeah, down below. Down below. It, gets, it literally gets you like 1% off. It's not... I don't, I don't make anything off it. It doesn't matter to me. If you guys want to use it, feel free. It doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. I don't make any money off it. Um, as far as I know, anyways, I've never been paid off of it. <laughs> but yeah, either way, guys, 57 Fear and Greed Index. Hopefully, you guys have a wonderful day. This is, uh, I mean, the market still looks good. Even though it's red today, it'll probably be green tomorrow. So stay tuned for uh, some more good news, hopefully, right? XRP, LTC, Doge looking good. All right, guys, I got to get out of here. I'm tired. I need more coffee. I only had one, and it's been a long morning. I appreciate the wife not going to work. They'll let me stream a full hour. Uh, CCXD, just add a $30 Wi-Fi AP for them. Comes with two Ethernet. What? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We're not leaving yet. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Holy electric, what are you talking about? I have one of those wall things. Ugh, I have to go get it now. Hold on. Let me go get it. Uno momento. All right, I'm back. Hold on. I'm gonna plug back in. All right. <coughs> I have this thing. Probably not what you're talking about. Right? This is just the Wi Fi extender, but it like allows it to run through the outlets, I guess, in the house. Plug it in one spot and then plug it in elsewhere and it works. Right? So this will work. But yeah, I want to see uh, what you're talking about, fully electric. It'd be very interesting. Very interesting. All right. Oh, weird things happening on the TV. At least it's not Purple Hearts this time. That's cool. Maybe it is Purple Hearts. Just stretched out. Who knows? All right. Ovalbor Tech. Appreciate you being here, buddy. Appreciate you being here. Sorry. We're going to be getting out of here. All right. All right. I'm out. You guys have a good day. Appreciate you. He will DM the ones he has. All right. I'll check it out, and then we will talk about it this afternoon and also if you guys anybody has any information about getting this thing up and running let me know because i still need to get this up and running i should make a video on it oh that's gonna be the next solo miner for bitcoin but have a good day guys enjoy your thursday and i'll see you guys later on today around 2 p.m now at the wife's home i can actually stream on time so i'll see you guys then have a good day and peace out